The story begins with a helpless woman running through the forest at night. She has her hand tied behind her back and she also has duct tape on her mouth. She is running trying to save her life. We are then introduced to Henry and Richard Krauss. They are two crazy brothers who are chasing the woman with their lethal bows. Julian Krauss is the oldest brother and he is in a nearby van and watches everything that happens. He is laughing like a total psycho. Soon enough the woman gets shot with an arrow and falls to the ground. We also see that a mysterious person with red hair is watching all of this from a distance. The woman is now in agony and she can no longer run. The Krauss brothers prepare to torture and kill her. Suddenly a storm of feathers appears around the brothers. We see ultra-fast blue blade killing the two brothers in seconds. Julian Krauss is in shock and starts to yell because his brothers are now dead. Suddenly through his night vision lenses he sees a scary eye appearing from nowhere. Julian is terrified and screams for help. Elsewhere, we see a young man called Koku walk into a place called Old Town. At first glance, Koku seems like a totally normal young man. We then see that he can jump off buildings without a problem. Koku goes to the shop to buy some food. We are then introduced to an agent of RIS, her name is Lily. She wears a uniform and is trying to hurry as she has to meet up with Koku. It seems that Lily gets her beans from Koku. Their relationship is still not clear. Lily is now rushing with her car and going through a forest. Soon she arrives at a crime scene where the Krauss brothers have been killed. She sees a civilian investigating the area. His name is Keith Flick. It seems that the murder was done by the mysterious killer B and he once more left his mark. Lily takes Keith back to the RI's base of operations. There we are introduced to other RI's agents, Jin, Brandon, and Mario. Mario was really impressed by Keith as he's a famous writer. Mario is actually a fan and has many of his books. In the past, Keith was someone who worked closely with the police, but in the past 10 years he has been retired. He is very antisocial and doesn't like people all that much. We learn that RIS stands for Royal Investigation Service and they are a very special unit that solves crimes. Eric begins the meeting about the murders. It's revealed that the woman actually survived the killing and is now in the hospital recovering. They have still not found Julian, the oldest of the Krauss brothers. As for Killer B, he has been involved in 15 killings in the past few years. He always leaves his mark at the murder scene. Elsewhere, we see Julian drive up to a remote location. He sees his murdered brothers on TV, and he now wants revenge. Suddenly, the red-haired man appears and offers help Julian with his revenge. In the meantime, Keith goes to talk with his childhood friend Gilbert, who now works for the forensic lab. Keith and Gilbert are great friends and they spend some time together. They talk about their tragic past. We then see that there is a red tank in the city attacking people. One of the agents called Kayla calls for army support. Boris, Lily, Brandon, and Mario all go chasing after the tank to try to stop it. Julian is screaming as he wants to fight Killer B. The red-haired man is the one driving the tank. Soon both the red-haired man and Julian go into a boat and drive away. Keith is now interested in this case, so he decides to get involved and investigate. Soon the red-haired man and Julian go on a train. Their Killer B shows up. Julian then gets killed by the red-haired man. Killer B gets ready to attack the red-haired man as he is the next target. We learn that the man with red hair is called Quinn and he attacks Killer B. Killer B using his blue sword kills Quinn in one hit. The train then crashes and many people get hurt. Soon the RI's agents arrive at the scene of the crash. Keith finds blue powder on the scene. Elsewhere we see Killer B and he promises to keep killing until he is caught. In a remote place outside of town we see a small farmhouse. The farmhouse looks abandoned but we learn that there are people in there. We see several men all with different colored hoodies. They are all targets that Killer B plans to kill. The man in the yellow hoodie is talking to a white rabbit. Suddenly gas starts to leak into the room and the man in the yellow hoodie starts to struggle to breathe. Soon he starts to vomit and he falls to the ground. We see that the other men are laughing and it seems that this was part of their plan. Elsewhere we see Koku playing his violin. His co-workers like to listen to him playing. Koku starts to talk about the history of the violin. Soon after Koku finishes playing, everyone starts to clap. We see that the owner of the violin shop is actually Lily's father. Lily's brother is also working in the shop for his father. Koku likes to spend time there. Brandon and Kayla start to investigate the Market Marker website. They find that members of the secret organization often have skull tattoos. Soon after that, Mario informs them that there has been another killing by Killer B. This time, a very influential person called Ed Kyle and his wife. He stole donations and was a criminal. For that reason, Killer B beheaded him and his wife. He left his mark like always. Keith also joins the other detectives at the crime scene. After investigating the scene a bit, Keith comes to the conclusion that this was done by a copycat killer and not the real Killer B. The other agents think that Keith might be wrong this time. Soon they find the corpse of the man with the yellow hoodie. Gilbert examines the body and concludes that poison gas was the reason the person died. 
Keith also joins him and they talk about the murder case. After they end their meeting, Keith prepares to leave. Gilbert asks Keith if he found out any new information about the killer in their past. Keith tells his friend that he will not give up. It seems that when they were young, the killer attacked them. Soon the RIA's agents find out that the man with the yellow hoodie was called Ian Reyes. He was a researcher at a company that does experiments. He has been missing for almost six months. Elsewhere, we see Koku working with his friend. He gets upset when he hears about Killer B on the TV. We do not know why Koku is so upset. All the agents go to an event that might get attacked by the poison gas. Keith is clumsy and gets into trouble while at the party. Boris is sitting in the car and reports that there is no news. It seems that there is no danger so far. Koku is also at the party, but he is dressed as a waiter. Soon after that, a man with long hair and a woman arrive. They pass by Koku and their eyes turn red. We see that Koku's eyes also turn red during the party. The team decides that it's time to protect the mayor as something strange is happening at the party. Mario manages to save the mayor from certain death. They arrest the man with the blue hoodie. Soon the entire room closes and Miss Red announces that everyone will die if the mayor isn't killed. Kayla tries to find the way to free everyone from the building. We see Koku on the rooftop meeting a mysterious woman. She has a skull tattoo on her and she seems to be involved. She informs Koku that he is very important, but if he does not surrender, she will kill him. The mysterious woman then takes out a grenade and blows up the roof. Kayla is still working hard to unlock the building. The people inside do not have a lot of time as the poison gas could be released very soon. One of the RIS agents notices that there has been an explosion on top of the building, but he still does not know what caused it. Soon enough, Kayla finally manages to unlock the building and the lockdown is stopped. Minatsuki starts to release a knockout gas as a way to cover up the agents so they do not get revealed. Keith soon figures out that someone is using meaningless crimes to lure out Killer B. It seems that the RIS agents are not the only ones chasing after Killer B. The mysterious woman who confronted Koku on the rooftop is actually called Izanami. Izanami now decides to take Koku with her, and she's on the run. Keith realizes this, and in his car, he chases after Izanami. Izanami takes Koku to Lake Linen. At this lake, she frees him and tries to recover his memories. It seems that Koku has forgotten something really important about himself. Koku refuses to help Izanami and decides to fight her. Koku is very skilled in combat. Soon he manages to defeat Izanami. When Izanami is defeated, she tells Koku that he must find someone called the Canopus. Koku kills Izanami without any mercy. In the meantime, we see that Lili is not feeling confident about the crimes. She thinks something is wrong but cannot figure it out because of the lack of evidence. Lili and Bran are not motivated anymore as they lost the criminals and they still haven't caught Killer B. Marco goes to talk with them and inspires them to remember their oath. He helps them feel motivated once again so that they find the killers. Keith is all alone and we see him have some sort of dream or memory. He sees Erika Kazumi Flick getting tortured and killed. It's now obvious that Keith has lost a loved one in the past. It's not clear how it happened or who was the killer. It seems that this woman was almost saved by a doctor, but he did more damage than good. Because of his past trauma, Keith is not really interested in making friends. He just wants to be left alone and solve crime cases. Keith goes to the Royal Library to research the case. At the same time, we see that Koku is also going to the same library for his own research. It's obvious that Koku is also trying to find the truth about his origins and what he truly is. Later in the day, Keith meets up with Lily. She truly wants to be the best detective possible, so she wants advice from Keith. He's not very interested in talking with her, but she demands to learn from his genius. She wants advice, and she wants to learn how Keith thinks about crime scenes. Also, we see that Boris is there. Boris is older than the rest of the detectives, but he likes to talk a lot. He decides to organize a party for everyone so that they can relax and spend some time together. We also see Minatsuki and the people who work for him. One person brings a vial of some sort of substance. This serum is needed for these people to survive. In the meantime, Bran continues his investigation. He soon finds out that the entire RIS base of operations is being watched. It seems that someone is spying them. Bran tries to leave the building and report this, but he gets attacked. Elsewhere, we see Koku and how he is dealing with everything. Koku starts to think about the woman he killed before. He remembers her name being Izanami, but he does not care much about her. She was not his main target, and he must keep investigating to find the truth about himself. It seems that Bran has survived the attack, but we do not know where he is. The RIS is now on high alert, and everyone is scared. Eric tells Boris, Mario, and Keith to stop investigating and to take a break. This is very suspicious. It seems that they are not allowed to investigate and save their friend. This might reveal that the attack came from inside the RIS organization, and someone is a traitor. The detectives all think that the attack came from someone that works with them. 
Now they think that Eric might be involved in the cover-up. We once more see Minatsuki and his organization. We also see that a pair of twins is working for Minatsuki. The group is not getting along and they start to get into fights. Kamui needs a lot of the serum to remain normal. Yuma is angry at Kamui, and they get into a fight. Yuna really doesn't like that Kamui is using so much of the serum for himself. Minatsuki has to step in and stop their fight before it gets dangerous. He orders Kamui to handle Bran and get rid of any evidence. Laika goes with Kamui, as they can work better in a team. It is then revealed that Bran actually knew that he was going to be kidnapped. It seems that he suspected that there was a traitor who was going to attack him. So for that reason, Bran left clues on his laptop. Kayla gets the laptop, and with Lily, they try to understand Bran's messages. It seems that Bran has discovered a lot of data about Minatsuki and the members of his team. Kayla manages to regain the data that's lost on Bran's laptop. The laptop is really damaged, so it's hard to get all the information. She starts to trace a program, but the laptop shuts down before she can trace anything valuable. Keith, on the other hand, is also trying to solve the mystery of Bran's disappearance. He soon finds Bran's watch, which has a code in it. Keith figures out this very soon, and he manages to follow the code. With these clues, Keith tries to set a trap for Jean. When Jean shows up, Keith tries to stop him. Jean then kills himself as a way to frame Keith for murder. Koku shows up as well and takes Keith away to the rooftop. The two talk for the first time. Koku and Keith talk, and Koku thinks that Keith might be cannabis. After a short while, Keith finally reveals the truth he discovered. Keith is now sure that Koko is actually Killer B. Koko is also named as just number 13. While that is happening, we see that Kamui is starting to lose himself as the drug is wearing off. Kamui will soon become very dangerous. Lily finally finds the dead Gene and realizes that he tried to frame Keith for his crimes and death. Still, the other agents now think that Keith murdered someone. Koku and Keith continue their confrontation. It seems that Koku is not stable and is now really angry. He wants Keith to give him the location of Yuna. Keith starts to realize that this entire time Koku was trying to communicate with Yuna. Every message that he sent was for Yuna. In the meantime, Keith is now a suspect in the murders. The rest of the RIS detectives now start to investigate him and try to find out more about his life. They look into his past and what happened to him. Keith and Koku continue their conversation. Keith reveals to Koku all the information he has learned. He reveals that there is a facility called Jala Blanca Institute. This place did very insane experiments as they tried to recreate ancient winged beasts. These beasts existed in the past, and the scientists found their remains. So the Jala Blanca researchers tried to replicate the beasts using the fossilized remains. They wanted to bring back these gods of the ancient past. This program required the scientists to do experiments on people. These experiments resulted in many of the people totally losing their minds and becoming monsters. After a while, these insane powerful people were used as a strike team. This team was supposed to do extremely dangerous missions. The team was called Market Maker, and they were very dangerous. Keith remembers all of this because when he was just a child, he managed to decode an inscription that was very important to the research. This inscription gave really crucial information about the creation of the gods and their powers. Keith's father was actually involved in the work of the Institute, and he tried to bring back these creatures. At some point, things turned very bad as the members of Market Maker decided to kill everyone. These powerful beings start to attack everyone working in the facility. Soon, they destroyed everything and ran away. In the present, Yuna shows up and she attacks Koku. Koku and Yuna are both powerful, and they use their powers in combat. Yuma is a very skilled fighter, and she has no mercy. At first, she is dominating the fight with her attacks. Suddenly, Koku transforms into a black-winged beast and attacks her. He is now too powerful for Yuna, and she almost dies. Suddenly, Koku realizes that she is the one he has been searching for. He remembers their past and his emotions. Yuna does not share any of that, and she stabs him. When Yuna stabs Koko, she also starts to remember their past together. They were childhood friends, and they loved each other very much. Yuna starts to go back to normal. She was very cheerful in her past, but now she is ruthless. Seeing Koko again, she remembers how different her life was. Suddenly, Minatsuki arrives and stabs both Koko and Yuna with his sword. Yuna and Koko get seriously injured. Yuna is totally out of the battle, and she needs time to recover. Minatsuki decides to take Yuna with him and leaves. Other members of Market Maker arrive and prepare to fight Koku. Seeing Yuna injured, Koku loses his mind and prepares to kill everyone. The Market Maker members start to fight Koku, and it's a big battle. Kamui goes head to head with Koku and tries to keep him in the fight. Suddenly, an airship called Moby Dick appears above in the sky. The ship starts to fire off harpoons at Koku. The harpoons hit both Koku and Kamui. They are now both injured and can barely move. Keith is also there, and he decides to attack Minatsuki. 
He uses his shotgun and fires it directly at Minatsuki. Minatsuki at first thinks that the bullet will do no damage, but he is surprised when it hurts. This is the first time his wound has hurt. Leica tells the others that it's time to retreat and run away. As they leave, Keith and Koku are left totally alone. Keith decides to help Koku heal his wounds. He tries to tend to his injuries. We then see the past about how Koku and Yuna had a different life. They were happy children that liked to play and have fun. Then they were taken to the institute. The scientists there started to do experiments on them. Even if life became difficult, Yuna and Koku had their own world. They even created a secret sign that just the two of them knew. Still, when the institute was attacked, the two of them got separated. The person who was protecting Koku was killed in the attack. Koku decided to absorb the bodies of those who protected him. Because the trauma of that event was too great, Koku repressed his own memories so that he could forget everything. He felt really guilty and just wanted to be normal again. In the present, we see that the RIS agency is still after Keith as he is now the prime suspect. They are given 24 hours to find Keith or they will all be fired. In the meantime, we see that Minatsuki actually now has to recover from his injury. His left arm gets amputated by Regulus. We are introduced to Regulus who is the main leader of the market maker revolution. He is the one who started their attack all those years ago. Keith and Kokun now have to run and hide. They are being chased by RIS and other forces of evil. They find a place to hide for a time. Keith and Koku talk about their life. Koku wants to know what happened to Keith in his past. Keith reveals that he had a sister called Erica. A killer called Dead Kyle killed her without mercy. Keith now wants to know more about Dead Kyle because he has been hunting him for years. Keith thinks that maybe Koku knows something. Koku then reveals that Dead Kyle was also a superhuman just like himself. At first, Dead Kyle was called Reggie. Reggie was released to live with the rest of humanity. He was a killer as well, and the more time he spent with other humans, the more aggressive he became. Soon, Reggie was totally out of control and started to kill everyone. Koku reveals that he kills everyone who is like Dead Kyle. His main targets are superhumans who are also killers. Koku just wants to protect humans from these creatures. Keith manages to get in contact with Eric. He informs Eric that he will soon have a solution to everything. Lily is still investigating everything, and she wants to learn more about Keith. Soon, she manages to find some of his notes. She starts to inspect his notes, and there she learns about his past. Lily gets really emotional as she sees that Keith has suffered a lot because of the death of his sister Erica. His notes are filled with his regrets and dark emotions. She also learns more about Erica. Eric sees that Lily is working on finding out more about Keith. Eric is convinced that Lily can find Keith and help him. For that reason, he suspends Lily. Kayla manages to create a secure system that isn't being spied on. This system is called Nautilus. This system manages to track down Lily who has gone looking for Keith. Lily is also tracked down by members of Market Maker. Lily finally manages to find Keith and Koku together. Takaru then attacks them all. Koku decides to fight Takaru. Takaru is a very fierce member of Market Maker and is very strong. Koku manages to counteract the attack and he finally kills Takaru. In the meantime, Minatsuki is still recovering from his injuries. Kukuri arrives and starts to yell at him for the losses they have experienced. Minatsuki has no mercy and he kills Kukuri. Finally, after a while, Keith decides that he must turn himself in. He surrenders to the RIS agents and tries to explain everything. Keith reveals that the influence from Market Maker has now spread into the agency, and there is a danger that everyone will turn into a villain. Keith thinks that it's very important they stop this from happening. He thinks that they need to expose those in the agency who are now evil. Keith thinks that he has a suspect, but so far he has no evidence. Eric is angry at Keith for waiting for so long to give them this information. He now wants Keith to help him find this suspect. Eric then reveals that he assembled the best trained soldiers and agents to become a team. He wanted them to be so efficient that they could be better and find all the killers. Eric gives this team to Keith and tells him to use them and stop the criminals. Keith reveals that his prime suspect is Gilbert. It's revealed that Gilbert has always been obsessed with Erica. Lily decides to help Keith, so she goes to confront Gilbert. She tries to manipulate Gilbert into confessing, but he realizes the trap. Gilbert has actually switched places with Kamui and Reggie. This was all a trap for Boris and Marco. Lily soon wakes up and she is lying on the forensic table. Gilbert is there and it's revealed that he is a crazy killer. He plans to kill Lily before Keith can save her. After a while, Yuna wakes up. She is now in a location with the other members of the Market Maker organization. Yuna realizes that she is totally healed and back to her old self. Minatsuki now wants her to join forces with him and help in his plan. Yuna, with her new memories, refuses to help as she only wants to be free and to spend time with Koku. Minatsuke hates this and gets angry. Keith is now trying to find Lily and Gilbert. 
He knows that Gilbert is a villain, and he must stop him before Lily gets hurt. Heath soon finds out that Gilbert has a secret lab in the building. In this lab, he has been creating Erica lookalikes and using them for his missions. Gilbert is totally a crazy scientist, and he wants to create the perfect replica of Keith's sister. Eric also joins Keith in his investigation, and they try to save Lily. Soon enough, they find a creepy trophy room. In this room, there are many dead bodies. It seems that over the years, Gilbert has been collecting the bodies of the people he kills. Suddenly, Keith's phone starts to ring. When Keith answers, Gilbert is on the other side of the phone. Gilbert starts to make fun of Keith and starts to threaten him. Keith just wants to stop Gilbert once and for all. Gilbert soon realizes that Keith and Eric might find him. For that reason, he decides to run away. Lily is left alone on the table. She is still alive. Gilbert runs away and decides to order Market Maker members to kill everyone who worked with them. He wants them to eliminate all the police officers who helped them. The Market Maker members receive this order, but some of them refuse to follow it. Leica does not want to be involved anymore with the endless killings. He quits the Market Maker team and leaves. Also, he does not want to help Gilbert anymore. When Gilbert finds this out, he starts to break down emotionally. He now must focus on his battle against Keith. He ignores Leica and prepares for the battle. Koku decides to take down the flying ship called Moby Dick. He uses his powers to boost himself and get to the ship. He now has to fight the member market members. Immediately, he gets into a fight with Minetsuki. Minetsuki is now totally insane and he goes after Koku. Their fight is brutal as both of them are really powerful and strong. Minetsuki has totally lost his mind, but he is still really fast. It is then revealed that Minetsuki is actually Regi who has lost his memories. In the past, for some reason, Regi's memories got mixed up. The real Minetsuki is actually Leika. This is a shocking twist as nobody expected that. Leika then triggers a giant bomb that was placed on the flying ship. This entire time, Leika was pretending to be someone else. Leika now makes his final escape. He goes to the helicopter and takes Yuna with him. They fly away far away from the explosion. Leika then takes the helicopter to the location where all the ancient fossils were discovered. It's also then revealed that there were some sort of inscriptions there as well. The scientists found all of this many years ago. Lily soon wakes up in the hospital. She is now totally safe and nobody is attacking her for the time being. Lily then gets worried as she realizes that Keith is on his own. He is alone going after Gilbert to finally kill him. Lily feels guilty as she wanted to help Keith. Keith finally manages to track down Gilbert. They are now alone and Gilbert will have to face justice. Gilbert now decides to reveal all his secrets. It was actually Gilbert who was behind the original attack of Maker Market. He is the one who organized everything. Gilbert talked to Minatsuki and gained his confidence by lying. Minatsuki was fooled to lead the attack. Minatsuki is the only one who can control all the Regi clones. Gilbert wanted to use all the Regis as soldiers. If the Regi soldiers did not follow the army and king, they could be used for world domination. Elsewhere, we see Leika and Yuna totally alone. Leika stabs Yuna and Yuna starts to bleed out. Leika then reveals that he is following an ancient prophecy. Leika wants to kill Koku and take his place as the Black Winged King. Leika tells Yuna that he won't kill her until he kills Koku. Keith tells Koku that he cannot go and help Yuna as there is a chance he might lose his powers at that location. Koku goes there anyway and ignores Keith's advice. He has to save Yuna as she means everything to him. When he finally reaches Leika and Yuna, Koku is now ready for the fight and Leika starts to attack immediately. Yuna watches Koku and Leika fight a brutal fight. Koku has lost the ability to regenerate after taking damage. Leika takes advantage of that and starts to attack even more. Leika starts to stab and shot Koku many times without mercy. Koku does not give up and just keeps coming. Leika is really surprised by this as Koku has taken much damage. Leika decides to finish the fight so he takes his knife out of Yuna. Yuna is now bleeding out and she could die very fast. Koku is now full of rage and he does not want to give up. He is now even more brutal and he goes after Leika with everything he has. Koku then starts to transform his own leg into blue steel. This is a power they got from Izanami. With this blade, he manages to attack Leika. In just one slash, Koku manages to cut the head off Leika. Leika is now finally dead and Koku can save Yuna. The last we see is Koku carrying Yuna away. In the meantime, Keith is finally confronting Gilbert. Gilbert reveals that he always wanted Keith to see the world like he did. For that reason, Gilbert put Keith in situations where he had to kill someone. Gilbert was very disappointed when Keith refused to kill people. Keith still refuses to kill anyone even Gilbert. Gilbert then starts to threaten Lily and promises to kill her. Keith can no longer ignore this and he shots Gilbert in the head. After three months, the things return to normal. Koku and Yuna now have a chance to live a totally normal life. Their hair has returned to normal form and they live a quiet life. 
We see that Yuna managed to heal herself and now she lives with Koku at Keith's house. Lily also arrives to pick Keith for their first day of work. Keith is also now much better and he informs Lily that Koku and Yuna are now really happy. We then see that Keith and Lily are driving in their car which is a bit too small. They are going to the station. Lily offers a ride to Yuma and Koku but there is just not enough space in the car. Koku refuses but Yuna manages to convince him to ride with them. All four of them go to work and laugh with each other. After a while, we are introduced to Kirisame. He was one of Koka's childhood protectors. Kirisame is a mysterious individual who now works with administrators who control the RIS and also the market makers. 